classic stories. Pinocchio, based on the story by Carlo Collodi. There was once a poor woodcarver named Geppetto who made fantastic clocks and music boxes and every kind of toy you can imagine, each one a work of art. Geppetto, who almost never had enough to eat, thought that if he could make a clever wooden puppet that could dance and turn somersaults in the air, he could travel around the world with it and earn a bit of bread and a glass of wine. So he found a good, smooth piece of wood, and taking up his tools, he carved a little boy, painted him in bright colors, and gave him the name Pinocchio. The puppet could walk and dance very well if Geppetto pulled its strings, but the woodcarver, who lived a lonely life with only his goldfish Cleo and his pet cat Figaro, for company, thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if Pinocchio was a real boy? That night, when everyone was sound asleep, the blue fairy came down from her star in the sky and touched Pinocchio with her wand. The puppet strings disappeared at the, her touch, while the blue fairy recited these words, Little puppet made of pine, wake, the gift of life is thine. Pinocchio was startled to find that he could move by himself and could even talk. Am I a real boy, he asked in amazement. But the fairy explained that to become a real boy, he would have to prove himself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and would have to learn to choose between right and wrong. Then someday you will be a real boy, Pinocchio, she promised. The blue fairy appointed Jiminy Cricket, a talking cricket who had lived a hundred years and more in the house, to be Pinocchio's conscience and to teach him the difference between right and wrong. As she faded away in the glow of her bright star, her voice drifted back. Remember, Pinocchio, be a good boy and let your conscience be your guide. The next morning when he awoke, Geppetto was overjoyed to find that Pinocchio was truly alive. You must go to school now, he told the puppet, and learn things and get smart so you can become a real boy. And the old woodcarver sold his only coat in order to buy Pinocchio's school books and a shiny red apple like the other children's. Pinocchio was so grateful that he threw his arms around Geppetto's neck and thanked him again and again. I shall learn to read at school today, father, he promised, and off he skipped with Jiminy Cricket at his heels. But on the way to school, Pinocchio was stopped by a couple of scheming rascals, Jay Worthington Fowlfellow, the fox, and his companion Gideon, the alley cat. The minute they laid eyes on the puppet without strings, they knew he would be worth a fortune to Stromboli, a showman who traveled, owned a traveling puppet theater. A little wooden boy? What an act! They convinced Pinocchio that the theater was an easier road to success than school. Jiminy Cricket tried his best to persuade the puppet that he must turn his back on temptation and go to school instead. But Pinocchio, happily trusting his new friends, refused to listen. Hi, diddle dee dee, he sang, an actor's life for me. Pinocchio was a great success on the stage, where the audience rained gold and silver coins on him. When Stromboli realized how much money he could make, he placed the valuable puppet in a cage. Pinocchio wept for his father, Geppetto, and his good conscience, Jiminy, neither of whom he expected ever to see again. But Jiminy Cricket did not give up so easily, and that night he found his way to poor Pinocchio's cage. While Jiminy was trying to comfort the puppet, the blue fairy appeared again. When she asked Pinocchio why he hadn't gone to school, the puppet invented a long story about being kidnapped by two monsters. As he told it, his wooden nose grew longer and longer with each lie, until finally it was like a small tree with branches and leaves sprouting from it. Pinocchio was frightened. What happened? he asked. You are telling a lie that keeps growing and growing as plain as the nose on your face, the fairy replied. Pinocchio promised to be truthful and good from then on, so the blue fairy touched his cage with her wand. This is the last time I can help you, she said as she freed him. Pinocchio, his nose back to normal, set off to race Jiminy Cricket back to Geppetto's house. Meanwhile, at the Red Lobster Inn, those two scamps, J. Worthington Fowlfellow and Gideon, were plotting new mischief. They had found a wicked coachman who collected stupid little boys who played hooky from school. I take them to Par Pleasure Island, he explained, and they never comes back. As boys, the coachman winked an eye. I'll pay you a gold piece for every boy you bring me. We leave at midnight. Once again, Foul Fellow and Gideon tricked Pinocchio into going with them. 
The puppet had been raising Jiminy Cricket home when he met the fox and the cat. They convinced Pinocchio that he needed a vacation at Pleasure Island for the sake of his health, and they personally handed him over to the coachman with a ticket for his fare. With a full load of boys, the coach, pulled by six little donkeys, clattered off to the ferry dock. Luckily, Jiminy Cricket had run after Pinocchio, and just in time, he hopped up on the lantern under the coach. At Pleasure Island, Pinocchio became friendly with a tough boy named Lampwick. This is a great place. No school. You can fight and wreck the place and no one stops you. Take all the cake, pie, dill pickles, and ice cream you want. Stop yourself. It's all free, Lampwick told him gleefully. The boys destroyed books and pictures, broke windows, set fire to houses, chopped up furniture, smoked cigars, played cards, and chewed tobacco. Being bad is lots of fun, ain't it? Pinocchio said to Lampwick, trying to copy the older boy's way of talking. They were playing cards and smoking when Jiminy Cricket finally found Pinocchio. Look at yourself, he scolded. How do you ex ever expect to be a real boy? But Pinocchio was having such a good time, he refused to leave when Jiminy asked him. He didn't hear the coachman say to one of his helpers, Give a bad boy enough rope and he'll soon make a jackass of himself. He didn't see the coachman loading a boat with little donkeys, but Jiminy, who had gone down to the dock alone, saw what was happening. The little donkeys brayed and the coachman cracked his whip at them. Quiet, he ordered. You boys had your fun. Now pay for it. Jiminy sped back to Pinocchio. Hope I'm not too late, he panted. Lampwick had already been turned into a braying donkey, and Pinocchio had gotten donkey's ears and a tail. Jiminy managed to get him to shore before the, he got any worse. Then the two of them swam for the mainland. Geppetto, in the meantime, had gone out to search for his missing son. When Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket finally came to his house, it was dark and empty. They were sitting sadly on the curb, wondering what could have happened to the kindly old man when a dove dropped a note at their feet. Jiminy read the message aloud. Geppetto while trying to get to Pleasure Island to find Pinocchio, had been swallowed by Monstro the Whale. He was alive in the whale's stomach at the bottom of the sea. I'm going to find him, Pinocchio declared. He set off for the ocean with Jiminy hopping along behind him. He's a whale of a whale, the cricket warned, and besides, it's dangerous. But Pinocchio was determined to find his father. When they got to the ocean, they plunged into the water and swam until they saw the huge, dark shape of Monstro. When the whale opened his jaws, Pinocchio and Jiminy swam into his mouth. There, inside the enormous creature, were Geppetto and his little raft. Father, cried Pinocchio. Pinocchio, my son! Geppetto exclaimed, hugging and kissing the puppet. Together, they figured out how to escape. They built a fire inside the whale, and when the smoke made Monstro sneeze, they were ready on the raft and quickly paddled out of his open mouth. Everything worked according to plan until the enraged whale caught sight of the little raft as it headed for shore. He pursued it and smashed it into splinters with his great tail, knocking Geppetto unconscious. Pinocchio bravely rescued his father and then tried to divert the angry whale while Geppetto was carried safely to shore by a big wave. After being trapped under some rocks, the puppet was finally washed to shore, half drowned. Sadly, Geppetto carried Pinocchio home and put him to bed. He wiped away a tear as he looked at the donkey's ears that had grown out of Pinocchio's head and thought how brave the puppet had been. Suddenly, the room glowed with a bright blue starlight, and the blue fairy appeared at the bedside. Awake, Pinocchio, awake, she said. You have been brave, truthful, and unselfish. Pinocchio sat up and opened his eyes. Father, he called, I'm a alive. Then, looking at his hands, he continued, And I'm real. I'm a real boy. Geppetto, Cleo, and Figaro were overjoyed and hugged and kissed the good-looking little boy with the dark brown hair and blue eyes who appeared so happy and full of joy. Jiminy Cricket smiled. He deserved to be a real boy, he said. At that, there appeared on his lapel a badge of solid gold with official conscience spelled out, on its blue ribbon. Oh, thank you, ma'am, the cricket chirped, but the blue fairy had already vanished. Only a brilliant star winked at Jiminy, its beams sparkling on his golden badge. Contentedly, the cricket sang his favorite song, 
When you wish upon a star, your dreams come true.